Hey Zebras, it's math time. Yay, your favorite. I know you've just been dying to get back to it since we had so much time off from it. But since we have had some time off from it, I know you might have forgotten a few things. When we don't lose it, use it all the time, we tend to lose it. And that's okay because we I will work this page with you today. Um, Every day I may not work the entire page with you, just like when you're here, I leave some for you to do because that shows me and your parents whether you're really getting it or not. Anybody can just watch me write an answer down and write the answer down. That doesn't mean you get it. That means you know how to copy. Um, so that's the point of making you do some of them on your own so that you can show me, show yourself, show your parents that you really do get it. Okay, so um, we're still in our fraction chapter. And we're working on comparing fractions, which we did that in that other fraction chapter. Comparing fractions to see which one's bigger, smaller, etc. Okay? So in order for you to compare them well, you need to have them in the same denominator, the same size of pieces. Remember when we said we know we easily know how to add two halves because they're both the same size of piece, right? Two halves makes I'm sorry, a half plus a half makes two halves, which when you have all the pieces, you have one whole pizza, right? You have a pizza cut into halves. So let's see, I can't tell how much you can see. Here's a pizza cut into half, and you still have the whole thing. Here's a half, here's a half. You have one, two halves, and that's the way we write it. So the denominator stays the same, we just add the numerators. One plus one is two. Two halves equals one whole. And this is a super simple example to kind of jog your memory on how to do it, okay? So it's easy with um, common denominators, no problem. But when you have one fourth plus one half, that marker is not working real super well, can you see it? One fourth plus one half, then you've got two different sizes of pieces. Here's two pizzas, I'm trying to make them about the same size. This one's cut into half. This one's cut into fourths. And you are having one piece of each, okay? So you're getting this piece, one half, and you're getting one of the four pieces, okay? And if you were gonna do that with your brother, you'd say, that's not fair, his piece is bigger than mine, right? So you can't add these together. You can't say he has two pieces. Let's say, let's take the other half of that pizza. Uh, yeah. And remember this was a fourth, so we could pull a half out of there. Now it looks like a Pac-Man and that's all what you're thinking. And now we're gonna chase that rabbit trail. So let me give you a second. Pac-Man, chomp, chomp. Okay, now back to math. Okay, so let's say that, I don't know why, but Evan's name came up to my mind first. Let's say that this is Evan and his brother and Evan, do you have another brother or sister that took this piece right here? Someone came along and ate that piece. And Evan grabbed this piece and this piece, okay? So I'm gonna move it over here to Evan's part. I'm sorry, Evan, I don't know your little brother's name, okay? But let's say Evan got these two pieces and brother got this, these two pieces. And little brother, of course, says, that's not fair. Evan got more than I did, right? Because that's, but you say, uh-uh, we both got two pieces. I got two pieces, you got two pieces. But yours is bigger, right? Okay, so we can't just add these together. We have to put them in a common denominator so that we can add them fairly. So the fair thing would have been to do over here is for mom to cut them all into fourths and then they wouldn't have been arguing anymore, right? So when I took this half and I divided it into fourths now, how many pieces is one half, okay? Remember how we do this? I'm gonna have to squish it in here because I didn't leave myself enough room. Okay, so now here's, here's the, the fourth that brother got. He still has a fourth, a fourth is a fourth, right? Okay, and we're going to make this one into fourths, so we're going to go like that. Okay, remember how we do that? What do we need to do to two to get it to four? We multiply it by two. Two times two is four, 
one times two is two. Remember, we divide, we, whatever we um, multiply, we gotta be fair to both of them. Whatever we multiply this one by, we have to multiply this one by to make it fair. We're trying to make this fair. So technically this half equals two fourths, right? Okay, and then a fourth up here. So then now we can add them easily. One fourth plus two fourths is three fourths. Let's add our column of, of your brother's um, pizza pieces here. He's got one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. Da, 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 da. And so for it to be fair, Evan needs to, well, as I say, he could give this one away or not eat it, or we could still make this fair, couldn't we? We could take that one extra piece that Evan has, right, that one extra fourth, and we could divide it in half, which half of a half is an eighth. And I would show you that, but for sake of time, I won't. So half of a half is an eighth. So give this little piece over here. Now it's completely fair. Evan and his brother both have exactly the same amount. See? It's all about cutting it up into the same denominator. That's what moms do that all the time. They don't probably even think about the fact that they're doing fractions all the time. You do use fractions all the time. So that's why we do a lot of fractions in school so that you can understand them. Okay, so today we are comparing fractions just like what we just did here, only they're gonna use this other little way, okay? Let's see if I can get you to see this. Here is, usually we have circles that we work with, right? And we take the whole, it's usually in a circle, and then we put the pieces on it. Well, this kind of helps you see, see something a little bit differently. If Elmo can wake up and focus, there we go. Okay, well, no, see, even Elmo's having a, huff, a tough time. There we go. All right, so if you have one hole, and can you see that okay? Yes, you can. One hole would be the same as two halves, right? See how that fills that spot exactly? One hole would also be three, one, two, three thirds, right? So if we were going to write these as fractions, this one is in one piece, okay? So we have one piece of one piece. Okay, it hasn't been cut up. This would be kind of like your, let's say this is like a six foot sub. You ever had a sub sandwich, a long one? And this is the whole sub before you start chopping it up to give to people. Sometimes they let you buy half of a full sub. They call them 12 inch sub, six inch sub. So these two would be your two six inch subs that they took from your hole, okay? So instead of a pizza, we're just using a different shape. But you can see that two halves makes a whole and if you wanted to, you could cut it into three thirds. One third, two thirds, three thirds. And we could keep going. How many fourths would make a whole? Oops, I forgot to finish this. Okay, one half plus one half is two halves. Two halves makes one whole, right? Then we have three. One, two, three. Three thirds makes one whole. And how many fourths do I need to make one whole? Yes, four fourths. Let's do it over here. Two, three, four. See how four fourths equals one whole. See that? And then now I've got fifths. So how many fifths? Oh, we're running out of room here. How many fifths? Whoops, I just did it. Would equal one whole. Five fifths equals one whole. Pull this down a little bit. Okay, you get the idea. So every time that we fill up the space, uh-oh, looks like, oh no, that's five. Counted wrong. Okay, and then we have it all the way down to tenths. How many tenths would make one whole? Yep, you guessed it, ten of them. One, two, and I'm not making this perfectly straight and so my OCD is gonna bother me, but I'm trying to just show you so you, understand there's 10 tenths so if you got that 12 inch sub that foot long sub at subway and you and your friends you've got nine friends that are going to share it you could make it all into 10 pieces and all 10 of you would get a piece so 10 tenths equals one whole pizza do you see okay 
And with all of this going like this, we could figure out a few other equivalent fractions. Watch this. Um, yeah, but they're kind of far away from each other. But here's a half up here. Okay. And we have the fourths under the thirds. Looky here. How many? Can you see it right here? There's a half. It takes two fourths to make half, right? Okay, how about with the tenths? The fifths and the tenths. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five tenths. Oh, that doesn't quite work, does it? <laughs> well, let's see. Two fifths would equal four tenths. That's we can use that one. See that? One fifth plus one fifth is two fifths. Let me write it here too. Two fifths, okay, equals one, two, three, four tenths. And remember how we do it this magic way, the equivalent fraction way? If we wanted to see how many fifths makes how many uh, two face two fifths makes how many tenths? Then we take and figure out the mystery. How do we get from here to here? We multiplied five times two. Five times two is ten, right? So then whatever we multi whatever we um, multiply the bottom number by, we have to multiply the top number by to um, to make it fair. They both have to be multiplied by two. It wouldn't be fair to multiply this one by two and that one by three. That's not going to be equal, equal, is it? That doesn't make sense. Five times two is ten. Two times two is four. So one, two, three, four tenths is the same as two fifths. This is faster to do it this way than it is to ch chop up a bunch of little pieces of paper, right? So but that's exactly what you're doing. So we're trying to visualize it, okay? Now, that is pretty much what we're doing today on this page. I decided at least for now, this is our first lesson, so we're still trying to get a lot of stuff figured out, but I decided that maybe I should cut off after I explain what we're doing for the day and then start the uh, math paper on a different video so that you could go back to the instruction video if you don't quite get it and not have to stop and figure out where we're at. So I'm going to try to make two math videos each day. One about the instruction of it, and the, next, the second one would be about helping you do your math page, okay, like we usually do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pause here, and you guys can start, uh, go grab math page, I'm sorry, I forgot. Grab math page 209, get your pencil ready, and click on the next video, and we'll start working it together.